Yes, six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here today to give you a quick tour of our service shop. Got a comment from one of our viewers here a couple days ago asking that he'd like to see around the inside of this place. So today I'm going to do a little bit of walking and talking and show you around our service facility. Before we go inside here, the building itself that we're walking into was built approximately five years ago. It is 40,000 square feet, just about one acre under roof. There are 32 service technicians in here today. It is full. All the bays are occupied. Uh, we're going to walk here through the offices at first. We'll kind of tour around the bay area, talk about what a technician's bay setup looks like, walk through some tool rooms, uh, maybe even dip into the service warehouse over here a little bit. So just take a quick walk around here and show you a little bit of everything. As we walk into the office right here, we use a very automotive style service model. It's kind of something we pivoted towards here a couple years ago uh, with a line of customer facing service writers and then shop focused service managers. Uh, so the service writers are going to be right inside the door here. So let's see who we can surprise. So far behind me over there would be the customer facing service writers. Now the role of the guys in that job is going to be to service customers who are calling in or walking in and basically setting up service appointments and making light diagnosis of mechanical problems. Just trying to kind of do an initial triage of what may be wrong with the machine. The offices off to the side over here are going to be service managers. Those guys are going to be, say, shop facing, and they're kind of focused on shop efficiency. So scheduling the work as it goes through the shops, making sure the service technicians have what they need, the resources and the parts that they need in order to do a repair. When you look around the room in here, you'll see all these books on the wall. Um, a lot of our service information has moved to the internet at this point and is available online. So guys can pull it up on their laptops and stuff while they're on the road. But a lot of the older stuff, uh, there is no replacement for a lot of these service manuals. Um, guys often wonder, you know, why shop labor is expensive when you go through and you look at repairing and working on this kind of equipment. There's a lot of expenses that we tied up in what we do behind just an hourly rate, and these books are one of them. So every time we might sell a piece of equipment, most of these are auto shipped to us from the manufacturer. And these books, oftentimes, you're going to pay three to four hundred dollars for every one of these that's on the shelf. Service manuals in these publications are really expensive and you're gonna notice we have a lot of them. We're up here on the second floor above those initial offices that you come into and this is our lunch and training room. Uh, continuing education is a big part of being a service technician. New models, new technologies and mechanical systems are always coming out and so we use this room up here to do service department training, also company training and meetings and that kind of thing. Um, so there's a lot of time gets spent up here making sure our guys are always on top of new things as they come out. So out here in the shop itself, we divide up our service department into four different kind of sub departments under the same roof. So there's a group of guys that largely we're walking through here right now that do mostly new equipment setup. So prep of new machinery that's going out. There's then this group down here that does mostly lawn and gardens, smaller equipment, small tractors, zero turn mowers, and that kind of thing. A group that does agricultural equipment, uh, balers, planters, big tractors, that kind of stuff. And then a group that will do self-propelled and construction equipment, so combines, um, excavators, forage harvesters, and that kind of big machinery. With the breadth of all the stuff that we sell, it is impossible for anybody to understand all of this stuff. So guys kind of receive training and specialize in a particular kind of equipment. You'll see this platform right here coming up out of the floor. So this is a bay for a lawn and garden technician. And every one of the guys that works on this smaller stuff has a raising platform that will come up out of the floor to bring equipment up to a working height. Since we were lucky enough in order to kind of build and design this building for service work, you'll see these chain hoists right here. Um, every one of the service bays has a beam that runs right down the middle of the bay with a chain hoist on it that they can slide these things back and forth in order to lift equipment. Um, you'll be surprised how often these things are used. A lot of machinery is worked on not sitting on its wheels, but oftentimes suspended or split or pulled. Uh, every guy's gonna have a large 10 foot workbench back here with a metal top uh, with lighting and stuff over top of it so that they can see what they're doing. The, uh, every technician also has a computer uh, today's environment, all of our scheduling is done on computers and most of the guys' technical information and that kind of stuff is going to come online at this point. So guys that are focused in the shop are all going to have PCs on their benches. Guys that do road work are going to have laptops that they carry with them. Now we actually write and design all of this software ourselves. Um, 
Unfortunately, there's not a lot of software that's really tailored well to a dealership like ourselves. So we pretty heavily customize the software that we have from our dealer business system. Uh, but this is going to lay out here the guy's schedule. He's going to know exactly what he's got coming up to work on here for the next couple of days, the job that he's going to work on. And once he clicks his job right here, he can clock in and out of what he's working on, but it also becomes a place for tracking the job as they progress. So taking notes about every hour of time that's punched onto the job, keeping track of things for warranty claims, uploading pictures of the job as we're working on stuff. This helps us and helps the technician really track the progress of a piece of equipment while it moves through our shop. If you look up towards the ceiling up there, you're gonna notice there's a couple things you don't see in most shops. The first one is obviously the big fans. Uh, a big space like this is not air conditioned in the summertime, but being in here in the shade with those things cranked up, it'll stay 10 or 15 degrees cooler in here than it would be if you were just outside. They make a huge difference in comfort in here. Uh, there's also oil reels up there on the ceiling. We have a bulk oil distribution system. We buy all of our oils by the tanker load. You can actually go over to a keypad and key in what product you need and how much of it you need, pull a hose down a piece of equipment, hit a button, and it will pump that right amount of oil directly into that piece of equipment so you're not there hoisting five gallon buckets and running back and forth. It's a much more efficient way to put oil into a machine. The orange hoses up on the ceiling are all for the exhaust system that allows us to run equipment inside without smoking this place up. So those are on pulleys that can be lowered down and slipped over top of the exhaust in order to keep the air in here breathable and not all cloudy. Behind me is one of our service trucks. Uh, these are often Ford F-550s. We have some Dodges too, just kind of depends on <laughs> when we were buying trucks at the time. And these are all gonna belong to the guys who work on the road. I've got a video specifically on what's on the inside of one of these trucks if you wanna check that out if you're interested in that kind of thing. Uh, but by and large, these belong to the technicians that are on the outside walls. So there's some exterior doors on the sides of the building that you can actually pull one of these trucks up to and ideally park the truck right beside, your, if you're a technician, right beside the bay that you work in. That's so that you can always be on a job. Now we're essentially looking at every hour of the day, making sure our guys are always on a job and always working efficiently. If you're a road technician, there's kind of that end of the day, beginning of the day when you might not necessarily have an immediate piece to work on. So you'll usually have two different jobs going, one in the shop and one on the road so that you're not always taking your tools and having to carry things in and out. We try to keep all that as close to the bay as possible. So by having exterior doors, most of these trucks are able to pull up to the outside of the building so that if you need something out of your truck, it's only a couple of steps away. Back here in the back corner of the building is a space that we have for welding and metal working. So we have a little bit of stock of some steel that we will have in order to do a little bit of custom fabrication. And usually that's for mounts and that kind of stuff. If we have, say, a breaker that we need to put onto an excavator and a mount that we need to weld or create between the two, we'll be able to do that stuff ourselves here in the shop. We've got some guys who are really talented talented welders and fabricators that often will dive in to kind of make those unique situations work. This area back here is the tool room. Now, while most service technicians are gonna have their own hand tools, there are certain things that are kind of unique pieces or tools that are specific to particular mechanical systems, and a piece of machinery that not everybody is certainly going to own. So there's a lot of drawers of high density cabinets back here that are gonna have some hand tools, you know, screws, fittings, bolts, nuts, uh, taps, that kind of stuff that you're going to need in order to work on a piece of equipment. Um, but also some things that are really unique when you get into things like special sockets and unique wrenches. Um, these light gray colored boxes back here are all manufacturer required tools. Um, oftentimes when a new piece of equipment comes out, that piece of equipment is going to have certain parts on it that you're just not going to be able to work on with a regular set of hand tools. And so we are often auto shipped or required to purchase a lot of these special shop tools in order to work on that equipment. Even before a failure happens, the lead time to get this kind of stuff is actually often months and months. So it's not something that we can just pull off of a shelf somewhere or get shipped in next day when we run into a situation that we need it. So you're gonna find when a new piece of equipment comes into a dealership for the first time between auto shipping of the service manuals and all the required tools or software in order to work on it, touching that machine for the very first time and bringing the first one on the lot can sometimes cost us $2,500, $3,000 and required things that are gonna show up before we've even sold the very first one. 
So you notice back here, we actually bin and track every one of these tools, again, partly because of their cost, uh, but so that we know where they're going as guys are pulling this stuff off the shelf. If it's out for one job and we need it, we can track it down and go out and find it to take it to another job. Really, some of the investment in this kind of stuff is what sets a dealership apart. I mean, not only does it enable you in order to work on those complex parts of the machine, it also enables you oftentimes to do it quickly. You know, a lot of this kind of stuff and a lot of the work that we do, uh, we're reliant on being able to do a job, not just properly, but also quickly. Um, so a lot of these tools that we have, the jigs that we have in order to manipulate equipment is what enables a dealership in order to work efficiently. Our tracking system in here is actually a little low tech. Uh, you'll notice these are numbered cal tags. And this is what we use in order to, uh, to track the whereabouts of these things. So everybody's name's over here on the board and when you're gonna take a tool out, you simply take your number here and drop it on the shelf for the tool that you've taken out and uh, replace it when you go. It's also a whiteboard over here that we use and we send things to our other locations. Again, we have five stores in Pennsylvania. Uh, this is our biggest hub location. When tools leave this, they're marked over here on the whiteboard so that we know their whereabouts. If you follow the light blue lines down the wall through the shop, they all lead back to here and those are air lines. So there's two large air compressors and a dryer up here that feed compressed air back into every bay. So keeping all this equipment back here kind of keeps all the noise out of the shop and isolated into this room. Swarm's also used for more of those custom tools that we were talking about earlier for transmission and engine jigs that will support those pieces as they're split off with a tractor. Um, just again, a big investment that's made in this kind of custom tooling, custom tools in order to be able to do that work properly and efficiently. You can imagine a shop like ours does a lot of oil changes and so that creates a waste problem that we have to deal with all the waste oils and the filter cans and that kind of stuff and dispose of them. This is actually a filter crusher. Uh, you can slide this guy open, stick a filter in here and operate this machine that will squash the filter into a little pancake. This guy will also drain into a waste oil collection system that's in this other room over here. Uh, it's all EPA regulated on how these things are stored. So we've got big tanks with walls around them in order to store all the waste oils as they come out of these machines. You know, a lot of guys burn that kind of stuff and we used to in the past as well in order to heat the shop. Eventually we stopped doing that because that kind of equipment takes a lot of maintenance and wear and tear. We just felt like we were putting more money into keeping the oil burners working properly than what was really worth our time. So today all that stuff is sold off to a recycler. This is the mechanical room for the bulk oil system. So you think you might go through a lot of engine oil. <laughs> we kind of set that bar pretty high. This right here is a 3,800 gallon tank for just 15W40. And this room goes back in here. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 different products that we store in bulk back here. Now the major ones are gonna flow up into the shop through that bulk oil system that we can punch in exactly how much we need, what we need, and it pumps it right down into the machine for us, making sure that our guys aren't taking a half an hour to handle five gallon buckets up into say the top of a combine or something like that. So really cool system, something you don't find in a lot of dealerships and it's an investment that we've made here. We also will take this stuff and sell it off to customers as bulk oil. You see this tote right here in front of me. Um, we can actually take oil that we buy by the tanker load, pump it down into this tote and actually bring it out to a farm. And we sell all the oil distribution systems for farms as well, where not this kind of scale, but in a small air powered pumps and that kind of stuff so that you can realize some of this cost savings in your own operation. This is our shop warehouse. And this is actually a separate building right beside the service shop that we just walked through, but it is a storage area for a lot of the uh, sometimes tooling uh, but also frankly spare parts uh, that we keep on hand. When you look at machines like combines and forage harvesters, the biggest equipment that farmers run, the uptime for that kind of stuff is absolutely crucial. Those things need to be able to run in the field 24-7 whenever they're needed for a solid period of the year. And so it's really important that we have all the things on hand in order to keep those customers going. Uh, so we actually have somewhere in the neighborhood of probably two to three hundred thousand uh, dollars worth of parts and hardware on hand in order to enable that level of service. Uh, we'll actually also go through and rebuild certain parts. A lot of the gearboxes and stuff on these big machines can cost upwards of $20,000. So rather than disposing of them when they break, we actually will remanufacture a lot of this stuff ourselves, set it back on our own shelves again so that we can keep those customers running at as low of a cost as possible. 
This is a job box right here. This is another piece that's kept up here in the warehouse. So when we know a service technician is gonna be going out to work on a particular piece of equipment, uh, we have these large metal boxes that we can throw in the back of a truck and it's gonna include a lot of the common parts that are used on that piece of machinery. And again, this is generally used for the biggest of big equipment, uh, but by throwing these in the back of one of service technician's truck, you can make sure they have not just the skills and the documentation, the manuals and the training and everything they need to work on that kind of equipment, but they also have all the parts and supplies on hand as well. When you go through and you look at, say, the cost of working on a piece of equipment and engaging the services of a shop like this, obviously it's costly, right? All these things add up fairly significantly. So just keep in the back of your mind that when you look at the hourly rate of what you pay for service work, you're not just paying for the time of that technician itself, but also what it takes to run a place like this for all of the the custom tools, the manuals, the, the back office staffing that goes through and makes sure that you know the jobs are lined up, you're kept in the loop, things are running efficiently for the, the warranty writers and just all the staff that's behind and supporting that person whose hour you're paying for. It's a lot more than just that one individual that makes up that hourly billing. Two, if you're looking for career opportunities, um, I've said this several times now, this is an industry that not nearly enough people are choosing to join at this point. So if you're somebody who can commit yourself to learning the skills, diving into this equipment, knowing how it works, places like us will chase you around for the rest of your life. So if you're looking for a new employer, you'd enjoy working in a setting like this, we are almost always hiring service technicians. Uh, if guys with the right skill set, man, we will find stuff for you to do because there are times that these guys are backed up for weeks just waiting to get to the kind of equipment that we need to out in the field because there's just never enough of us in order to do the work. So uh, if we're of interest for you at Messick, you have a piece of equipment you'd like to work on, or you'd like to talk about career opportunities, give us a call. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at Messick's.com.